Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons. This is the sixth video in the little set of videos I'm doing that shows you how I prepare a fuel package for a fuel crew on a topo survey. So if you watch video number five, you remember we just got done editing the instructions here in this right hand column. Site access, methods for control, methods for the aerial, and methods for the ground infill. Now, in the instructions for the ground infill topo, I told the crew I need you to collect some spots and, and major brake lines in, in a couple of these areas where we have heavy tree canopy. And I want to graphically show the field crews uh, the two or three areas where I think that's going to be critical. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to zoom in here. And I want a, a little bit different symbol. So I've got uh, circle arrowhead symbols, diamond arrowhead symbols, and square arrowhead symbols. So I'm going to make a, one other shape. So we're going to pull up in our layers dialog. We'll unlock the shape arrows layer. And uh, I'm going to grab this. I'm actually going to ungroup this. And I'm going to grab just the arrowhead. Actually, let me undo that. I need a, one that's a circle. So we'll get this one down here. So we'll duplicate that. And we'll pull it up. Okay, and I'm going to ungroup it because I don't want to change the ch the text here with this next uh, at this next action. Okay, so now I've got just the circle highlighted, not the text, and I'm just going to stretch this into an ellipse. So let's try this. Hold down this. If you hold down the Shift key, it'll center, and I'm just going to make that an ellipse. Now, when you stretch things like that in Inkscape, your stroke and fill will will uh, scale, and that's not what I want. So we need to pull up the fill and stroke dialog and, and shrink that stroke back down. Should be four pixels, not that 4.69. Okay. Actually, that looks that looks like it's too thick. Maybe it's too no. Let's try three. Three is the winner. Three pixels. Okay. All right. And uh, now I'm going to go ahead and number this. Grab that text and we'll number this. Uh, let's see. We'll go up to eight. We'll make that eight. And I don't want to use that bright red. So I'm going to change this color here we'll, we'll, of this stroke. We'll pull up the fill dialog, fill and stroke dialog, and uh, we'll enter this color we originally had on the mapping limits that didn't stand out as brightly as I wanted. But it'll work for what we're doing here. Okay. All right, so I know I'm going to need some infill here. I'm going to need some infill here. And we're going to need some infill over here. Okay. And I'm going to number these sequentially. And the reason I do this, even though they're, they're indicating the same step, uh, I'm going to number those sequentially so if the crew's got questions, they can call me and refer to that number. And then I'm going to just group these together. Group the text and the symbol. Okay. And I'm not going to add a leader line to each one of those since they're typical. So I'm actually just going to do a single leader line. So I'll duplicate that, pull it down, and uh, then we'll line it up over here. Looks like we're going to go right here. And while I've got, oops, while I've got that highlighted, that's uh, arrowhead shaft or that uh, leader line, we'll go ahead and change that color in the fill and stroke dialog too. And I've got that color wheel pulled up, Adobe color wheel, so I'm just going to type in those red, green, blue values. Okay, we'll hit our save button, and we need to unlock a couple layers, so I'm going to lock that arrowhead layer now, and we're going to lock the shape bullets, we should be done with that, but I'm going to unlock the uh, shapes layout, because I need to copy this box down, so we'll grab this box and this text right here, and we're going to say edit this text. 
and we're going to say uh, location of ground infill under tree canopy. Zoom to page, save that. Okay. And then I want to add a note down here because I had a specific request from the client. So I'm going to say uh, at uh, ground infill location number 10. Make sure you survey the flow line of the creek drainage ditch. So the client wanted to make sure that we picked that up. Okay, so that's done. Now there's one thing I'm missing here. piece of text here and we're just going to note that this is page one of two. I'm going to right hand justify that text. and uh, Get it in the right spot here. And we're going to say that's page one of two. And we'll zoom to the page. We'll save. Uh, actually, before we save, we should go in and lock all our layers now that we think we're done. The reason I do that is that way you don't open this file and inadvertently start dragging stuff around. And uh, we're going to save that exhibit as a PDF. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and close Inkscape. Open up that PDF just so you can see what it looks like. All right, so here's the PDF exhibit that will go out with the field crew as part of their field package. Uh, they should have everything they need, tells them the limits, shows them what type of control to set where, lets them know what locations we're going to need uh, ground infill, and gives them some other instructions, how to access the site, what to set for control, how to do the aerial, what to do for the ground infill. Okay. All right. Appreciate you guys watching the video. Uh, we're going to do another video. That will be video number seven where we're going to swap that uh, image out with an oblique. And... Uh, give the field crew just kind of another uh, view of that, of the mapping limits for the job there. Okay, so we'll, we'll do that in the next video, and I appreciate you guys watching.